Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and excited that you're joining me today in my craft studio for a little bit of paper crafting fun. Yay! I was just a smidge early. I'm trying to go a little bit earlier in Facebook so that it starts to pop up in your news feeds for those that um, watch me so um, that you guys can join me right at the beginning, right? Not have to go back and watch the replay. Of course, you're welcome to watch the replay anytime. So what do I have for you today? Today, we are going to do a super cool fun fold and we are featuring the Peaceful Deer Bundle. So let me pull out the card and show that to you. So this is it. And then it is an accordion Z fold. I'm terrible at putting it in front of the screen. <laughs> there we go, like that. So it does fold flat and will pop in the mail. It's a little chunky on this side because you've got those layers right there. But um, I think this is a fabulous one. So you can make this pretty easily. So we're gonna do this quickly today. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. And we're also featuring the Peaceful Prince Designer Series paper on this. So you'll be able to see that. Um, yeah, so you might notice a few cards behind me. There they are. <laughs> that is a sneak peek of this month's uh, Forget Me Not Card Club. So if you love fun folds and techniques, join me for the online card club. We have a good time each month. Um, we do four featured projects. I go live on Tuesday evenings in that private Facebook group, and we put one of our cards together each week. There's written tutorials with the step-by-step -step instructions. And then, of course, there's bonus projects. So there's 10 to 12 sometimes a few more bonus projects each month that I also share just for that group. So it's very exclusive. So hopefully you'll join me sometime if you're not already a club member. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let me switch this camera over, right? And we will get started on our project. Yay! All right, so as I mentioned, we are featuring the Peaceful Deer Stamp Set and Punch Bundle. So that's this right here for today's project. And then I've also brought in the um, Peaceful Prints Designer Series paper. So this is a paper pack that you can get for free during celebration. Oh, hey, Melissa, so glad you're here today. Um, so again, you get this free with a $50 purchase during celebration. And this is a great paper pack because not only does it have some holiday images in it, you know, you can use these plaids for other things. Um, you know, you've got some really nice just all occasion prints that you can use as well on the back side. So I love, love, love this paper. So we are featuring this bundle. Let me bring in the card again and I'm going to open it up so you can see it um, in its extended position here. Um, just so pretty. So we've got our sentiment, our stamped images, and we're really showcasing that designer series paper. And then um, we've got our lovely deer and our sentiment there. So uh, this is also the bundle that I am featuring in my upcoming bingo. Registration closes this Friday. So you want to go ahead and get registered for that. Hey, Mary, so glad you're here today. And then I want to show you one other card before we jump into this. So this is a card I just posted on my blog uh, yesterday. So um, this is really cool, too. So same bundle um, as far as the deer goes there. And then I mixed this with some of the designer paper from the Blackberry Beauty designer series paper pack, brought in a little bit of the Bedazzle uh, celebration paper as well. And this is a thank you card. So this was my entry for Kylie Bertucci's International Highlights blog hop. So go out, find my post and on my blog, creativelyyours.com, and go vote for me. I would love it. Um, the winners get a chance to be in a special blog hub for winners, which is just kind of a fun recognition. So not anything life shattering, but I love it. And if you like my card, I'd love for you to vote for me. All right, let's jump in and get started with this one, our main feature for today. So again, this is going to fold up flat like this. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yay. And so it's going to sit up really nice to put on display. Yay. All right, let's start with our card base. So I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored. We're going to start there first. So um, thank Wendy. What am I talking about? 
Let me pull this out, pull this out. I already set this up, but I will go back, as you guys know, I'll go back and add the complete supply list and cut dimensions into the video description. So anytime you see that, you have to hit the see more or show more to expand it so that you can see all of that lovely information. So same thing when you're um, watching on YouTube, any of my video replays on YouTube, um, there's a show more and you have to show more to see all the good stuff, right? So the complete supply list so you can place your order as well as um, how to cut your, your layers so that you can assemble this easily. All right, so we are going to take our cardstock. Let me see if I've got my cheat sheet here. This measures nine and three quarters by five and a half. And we are gonna score it at one and three eighths, uh, two and three quarters, Four and an eighth and five and a half. So hopefully that all makes sense. All right. And then we've got a second piece that we're going to score as well. And this piece is four and a half by three. And let's move these because I will score incorrectly if I don't change this to be in the right location. Do you guys do that? I find it safer. Just move the little score things where they need to be two and a quarter. So I'm going to score this in half at two and a quarter. All right, so that's the only pieces. Did I cut that right? Yeah, two and a quarter, I got it. All right, just looked off center. All right, we're gonna pull this out. Hey, Susan, so glad you're here. Mary McKay, good to see you as well. Love that you guys are joining me. So if you're enjoying the video, be sure to uh, share it with your crafty friends. So I'm gonna accordion fold on this card base on each of these score lines. I'm just running this bone folder. I want a nice, good, crisp crease on each one of these. I'm back that way, and then I'll show you what I mean by the accordion. So it's mountain valley, mountain valley, like that. Make sense? And then this is the uh, back of your card, and this is the part that's going to fold closed. So again, you want a nice, nice, good crease, right? All right, and then I'm going to open it all back up. <laughs> so let's bring in the sample again so you can see what we've got here. So we're going to start by adding our designer series pieces to this back panel here. So each of those is, let's see if I've got my cheat. If I can get this right, they are one and a quarter by five and three eighths, and I've chosen four of the pieces from the print. So very fun. And again, you can use whichever size you want to use. I'm going to rotate that so that I can easily orient this and get these layers on. So the way I cut it leaves a very narrow up oh, and look at that. I didn't cut this one the length. Did I do it on all of them? No, nope, just this one. Hmm. Who knew? All right, so we're gonna just lay this out, use this other layer as a guide, and I'm putting it on top because I already have adhesive on the bottom. So it looks like I didn't come back and trim that. So we'll just clip this off with our scissors. It'll be fine. No worries, we can make it work. All right, now let's try again. Let's see if we can get this in the right place. Yay! All right, and again, I've got a narrow border around the edge there, so cute. All right, let's get these two. I like this little birch tree look. You could use the candy stripe as well, the little diagonal stripe, I like that. But that was kind of outdoorsy with the little birch tree print here. That's definitely all occasion. All right, let's get this next panel. So you could choose to use all the same print or use different prints. I chose to use different prints, except for I put the same on the, those two panels but it's really whatever makes you happy. Did you guys have a nice long weekend? Do something fun? Did you do any crafting? Hey, Jean, so glad you're here today. All right, so the, that's our base right there. So now we're ready to bring in this layer right here. So let me fold this in half. So today's project was inspired by one that I saw created by Mary Deathridge. And I just had to give it a try. And so mine's a little bit different, but very similar as well. All right, so now I've got 
two designer series paper pieces, and these are cut at two and an eighth by two and seven eighths, and I'm just going to adhere them to both sides of that panel there. I'm just using my stamp and seal. Use what adhesive makes you happy, right? All good. Oh, it, okay, stop working. Let's pull on our silicone craft sheet. We'll just run that right on there. Starts it back up really easily for me. All righty, and we've got that right down in there. Now, now we're ready to go ahead and assemble this. Ooh, excuse me. So I'm gonna lay this centered on this layer. Now you can center it top to bottom or you can slide it up or down, whatever makes you happy. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my ribbon on this layer before I put it down. I did that last time too. And when I say last time, when I made my original sample, I decided I wanted the ribbon. So I was able to pull that off. So let's bring in our silicone craft sheet just because that will make this a little bit easier. And I bring in this black glitter organdy ribbon. So of course, when I first look at this ribbon, I think Halloween, right? Do you guys? But it's so much more than just Halloween. I think. Anyway, I should probably cut this off this spool, but I'm going to leave it on. Actually, having the adhesive on here might make this a little easier to tie. Maybe I got lucky, right? So we'll do our little bow here. Oh, my arthritis is getting me today. All right, got it. And just tighten that up, and you know, you can hold the knot. And pull that loop a little bit smaller if you'd like. Mess with it as much or as little as you want. Clip off your tail ends. Get rid of that spool because you don't need all that extra. All right, now I'm going to slide this ribbon uh, over a little bit because I want it all the way to the end. So, and I'm going to move it a little bit in where I have it positioned. Sorry, I keep pulling it towards me. That doesn't help you see a thing, does it? If I can get that to slide over because I want it all the way to that edge if I can get it. All right, I think this is where I'm going to have to be happy with it. Maybe I can slide it just a bit more. Yeah, I think I got it. All right, I'm going to be happy with that. Move this out of my way. And let's see if we can here, adhere this right back down on our layer. We might have to add a little bit more adhesive. Let's see. Nope, I think it's going to be just fine. Hey, Tammy, so glad you're here. So Mary had a good weekend, no crafting. Oh, you don't have to craft. There's no apologies for that. Sometimes our weekends involve other things. I put together a trampoline and a porch swing this weekend for my granddaughter. Her birthday's coming up. Uh, she is going to be five. I cannot believe Arlie is already going to be five, but she will be five in uh, a few weeks, and we are preparing for a fun fun family gathering for her birthday. So I'm just going to add some stamp and seal to both ends of this layer. And so I'm going to center it back again. My center fold is at this center fold. And so I'm only adhering it to these two panels. Now I could have put a couple of strips of adhesive. If you want a little bit more on there, you can do that. If you want to use tear and tape, if you're concerned that this is going to fall apart, you can do that as well. But this works perfectly so that that folds flat like that. Nice. Cool. I love it. All right. Let's do our deer next. So normally when I use our punches, I like to use them, at least most of them, upside down. So you're going to unlock it, slide this open, and it opens up this to be able to squeeze it, right? So if I hold it upside down and I punch this deer, see the direction he's facing? Well, on my sample, I wanted it facing the other direction. So to do that, I can either put my cardstock in or my paper in like this, and he's going to be facing this way, or I can flip it to the back. I'm still using my punch upside down because I want to be able to see that my paper is all the way underneath the punch. And when I squeeze, now he's flipped the other way. Does that make sense? Kind of the, the direction that he looks like on the front of the punch is actually what's happening. So you're actually changing the orientation a little bit when you flip it upside down. All right. And then to close this, you can close this back up and then slide the lock back in place, ready to put on your shelf and store it nice and compact. Yes? 
Who had a birthday? Who and has too much energy? Oh, it was your birthday. Yay, Mary McKay. Yay. Oh, good. I'm glad your husband spoiled you all weekend. That's lovely. Who doesn't enjoy that, right? Nice. Like it, like it, like it. All right. So we're going to plop our deer on here and I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals. So let's see. I probably didn't put the black ones in the description in my supply list, but that's what I'm going to pull out if I can grab them here. And I'm just going to use some edges. You could use the small dimensionals as well. You don't have to use um, the big ones. It's entirely up to you and you can put as much or as little on here as you want. I'm just putting a few because I want this to be pretty stable, nice and sturdy. Again, you can use the black ones, the white ones, whatever makes your heart happy, right? And then I kind of want him leaping up a little bit, like he's dancing, maybe. Okay, we're going to go there. Now, I found in my original sample, because of the ribbon I put under here, that this kind of shifted a little bit on me. So if you're concerned about that, you can slide a couple glue dots underneath that ribbon to just kind of keep it from popping up. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So let's just grab a glue dot. I'm going to lift that and slide that under that ribbon just to make sure that's not going to shift on us as we add our layers. All right, great. Now I think that's nice and secure that way. Oh, Jean, you say me too much energy? Why do I have too much energy? No, it's all good. It's Tuesday. We're ready for a good week. I got lots going on. Yeah, we're working on plans for our next Maker's Mojo. We've got stamp and escape work that we're working on. I've been designing my projects. It's so much fun. I'm cutting for classes. Yeah, I'm busy. Busy, busy, busy. But it's all good. All right. So next I've got my sentiment. Now I've already die cut this out using the stitch rectangle dies. I use that, what I call the smallest skinny rectangle out of that die set. So I just used a piece of basic weight cardstock. I'm gonna bring in my real red and boy, my real red is kind of messy looking. I'm gonna bring my real red uh, ink pad and my sentiment. Now, if you need a foam pad underneath, if you're having any issues with your photopolymer stamp stamping well, uh, these are so little, I've not had any issues. So I'm not gonna worry about it. If you were having issues, definitely pull in a foam pad and use that. And now I want to go ahead and pop this sentiment right across that deer and put some dimensionals on the back. So let's see what I've got here. Oh, well, we're gonna switch. We're gonna use the white dimensionals just because that's what I grabbed. And I'm gonna go ahead and put three on there. And I'm not gonna get too close to this end because I've got that big bulky bow that I'm over the top of. It's not big and bulky, I shouldn't say it like that. It's not too bad of a blow, but it is bulkier than this little, uh, this little guy I've got going on here. So you could position it so you could see the ribbon or fully cover the ribbon, whatever makes your heart happy is what's important, right? Cute. Super cute. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, Jennifer, so glad you're here. All right, let's do our back panel here. So let's slide that out of our way. And I am going to bring in my basic white cardstock layer. And I think I need a scrap of paper. Let's pull in a scrap of paper. And I think I've, are, I've forgotten my embellishments as well. Always, always something, right? All right, let's bring in Garden Green for our ink pad. And I'm gonna start with the large tree here. Now this is where I probably should bring in a foam pad, but I'm not going to. You can't even see what I'm doing. Let's move all this out of the way. Move that up. There we go. So I stamped one large tree right there. And then I've got a group of three trees here. I'm gonna ink those up also in Garden Green. And then I'm going to stamp them on my scrap first and then stamp them there just to give a little more dimension to those layers. I like it. Some of the trees look closer and further from each other, right? All right. So the next thing I want to do, I got debris on here, is get my sentiment stamped. So I'm going to kind of just lay this here. I'm not going to adhere it down just yet because if I make a mistake, I can always flip the layer over. 
but I want to place my sentiment so that it actually falls behind where this is at because I don't really want to see it from the front. So let me grab the sentiment and the real red ink pad. I'm going to ink that up. And I'm going to go up a little bit higher. Let's go right there. All right, now let's double check and see how I did. Did I get it behind the way or not? I think I did. Yay! Fell right behind. Super cute. All right, our last part is rainstones. So I am going to have to run across the room because I don't know where I left my rainstones. I pulled them, but I must have grabbed them yet again because they're not on my table. All right. Need a little bling a bling. All right, we have rainstones. Yay! All right, let's just grab a couple. And I'm going to close this and kind of see how I want to place them. So let me grab one. That looks good to me. There's no um, right or wrong way to do this, in my opinion. I just like to have a variety on here. And I like to work in groups of three. I like odd numbers. You could do more, but I think this just adds a nice little touch. So I've got one on the front and then a cluster right there. So it's kind of fun. Nice. So now it's ready to stand up. Oh, I never adhered this layer down. Too funny. I got sidetracked with my rhinestones. That's hilarious. All right, we can still put this down, even though there's rhinestones on the back. We'll just run our adhesive on. Too funny. I had laid it down so nicely. All right, now it's actually adhered together. <laughs> that might be an important piece to glue down, right? <laughs> so now it's ready to sign your project and pop it in the mail. And of course, you would want to decorate your envelopes, right? If you're like me, you have several packs of this designer series paper. It's one of my favorites from the celebration offering that's going on now. And we only have to the end of September to get all our favorites or multiples of our favorites. So this is definitely one of my go-to papers. Um, loving the little penguin one and the little dazzle one as well. Um, but I think this one's going to be able to uh, be used so much uh, for so many occasions. So I've been kind of stealing a little bit of it. Stockpiling, I guess you could say, not stealing. Anyway, all right. I hope you guys love this project and we'll give this fun fold a try. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, I hope to see you guys again next Tuesday. Okay, bye for now.